So this is a question from the physical retreat. Dear Arjan, as we are cleaning, we may accidentally kill some insects. Are we creating karma? There's a second part to the question. There is a warp's nest in my house. How do I get rid of it without creating bad karma? Thank you, Arjan. So we, we, when we're cleaning the house, uh, there may be some insects and termites, uh, ants, etc. But uh, our intention isn't to, to kill them. We're just uh, cleaning. And uh, if we leave some of these insects and we, if they may cause problems to our life and to our house, but if we uh, kill them, that, that is bad karma. But we have to establish the intention that we are simply trying to clean the house or sweep um, them. And our intention isn't to kill them. Um, it's like when we drive our car, maybe a hundred kilometers or so, and maybe there's many uh, tens of thousands of insects that are dying from hitting the windscreen. Uh, or if we turn on a light at night, Again, insects may die from that, but our intention isn't to kill, and so uh, it isn't wrong to do to do that. Um, and we may be able to find certain natural, um, organic ways to repel uh, these insects, maybe using sprays, uh, but we avoid trying to kill them directly. Um, but if it's a wasp's nest, then it may be a danger to our life, our house, um, and then we may have to hire a company that is their occupation who have knowledge in this area and that are able to overcome this problem uh, to organize this for us. Um, uh, an example, uh, sorry, a story that uh, Venerable Ajahn Anand wanted to share was that in the time of Wat Nopong, there was a wasp's nest that was close to Ajahn Chah's, uh, Venerable Ajahn Chah's kuti. And uh, two or three of them actually did um, sting him. Uh, and after that, Ajahn Shah didn't come out to even eat the meal. So he's likely had a lot of uh, pain from those wasp bite. Um, so he was healing himself through uh, his samadhi. Um, but it still is a karma that, uh, karma being done by stinging and harming a uh, one who is well practiced. Um, and later on after this, there were some ins, uh, ants that who are, sorry, the ants that were in Wat Nong Pong, and they actually climbed up to the tree where this wasp nest was and ended up uh, harming or fighting and end up killing these wasps. Uh, so that's a story, but uh, for us, maybe we don't have that type of parami, um, and so we may need to find certain uh, companies, whatever, to to organize this and, and take care of it for us. Uh, because otherwise, if we leave them, it'd be harmful for um, us in the future, if it gets worse, and harmful to our children and to our house. So this is a question from the physical retreat. There are three separate questions. Dear Ajahn, how is Samadhi different from Nirvana? Second question, can we contemplate while we are doing walking meditation? Third question, how do we practice dying or death in our sleep? Thank you, Ajahn. So the first question, uh, how is Samadhi different from Nirvana? Now, samadhi is the firmly concentrated mind or the one-pointed mind. Uh, so there's uh, kanika samadhi. It's like a small amount of samadhi or temporary samadhi. Uh, upachara samadhi, which is um, like the mind uh, is close to uh, becoming still, becoming one-pointed. There's apana samadhi, but if it enters jhana, then this is first jhana, can be second, third, fourth jhana. Uh, so this is training the mind to have peace, um, but by way of uh, suppressing the 
chelases, the mental defilements. Uh, so one suppresses uh, the hindrances of um, sensual desire, aversion, uh, suppresses, uh, sorry, ill will, uh, suppresses uh, restlessness, uh, drowsiness, um, and a sloth and torpor and uh, doubt. Uh, so this can be compared to like a rock that covers over the grass. And then because there's a rock there, then the grass can't grow anymore. Uh, but the roots of the grass are still there. So if the rock is taken off, then the grass grows again. And so samadhi is like covering over the gilases or suppressing the gilases in that way. Um, but with the power and strength of samadhi, there is uh, happiness there or bliss there in the mind. Um, but if this samadhi uh, disappears, uh, then uh, greed, hatred, delusion arise again. Um, and then the mind has suffering come up again. Uh, so this samadhi that we develop, uh, we use it in order to develop wisdom. Uh, we contemplate into uh, rupa and nama, materiality, mentality, uh, seeing it according to wisdom uh, or seeing with wisdom that it is uh, of the nature uh, to be anicca, dukkha, anatta, impermanent, unsatisfactory, non-self, and seeing the emptiness of rupa and nama. Um, so this is able to uh, rid or get rid of the gilases, the defilements. And so the fully perfectly awakened Buddha, the Arahant, uh, Sawaka, the disciples were able to um, get rid of their defilements, their gilases, uh, so that they'd never arise again. Uh, or we could say uh, they're arising and passing at the same time. And so this is the mind that is separated from uh, its objects uh, and the mind has been completely liberated and uh, attachment and clinging doesn't arise again. Uh, in terms of the second question of contemplating while one is walking meditation, uh, that walking meditation is considered practicing and developing samadhi. And so the mind, if the mind's able to be peaceful, then one can contemplate in all postures, whether one is sitting, walking, standing, or lying down, uh, if one has that strength of samadhi. Uh, in terms of the third question of contemplating Maranatnu Sati, uh, death, while one is asleep, uh, first one must train in contemplating death while one is awake still or in the day. Uh, if uh, one is able to develop one's mindfulness continuously, that is continually aware of the breath in and out in one's meditation object, uh, then it may be that when one is asleep, that one is able, the mind is still awake, even though one is asleep. And that's when one's mindfulness is very good. Um, but one who hasn't trained uh, much, then when one sleeps, then they'll just be asleep without uh, mindfulness. Uh, so in the beginning, one's mindfulness is weak um, and we need to train and develop it uh, but if our practice develops, is good, then later, even when we're asleep, then the mind can be awake. Um, but we aren't yet able to contemplate while we're asleep. So uh, contemplate while you're awake uh, and do this a lot. So this is a question from the physical retreat. Hi, Ajahn. What is the difference between Samadhi and Jhana? Can you elaborate, sorry, so this is a different question for the second part. Can you elaborate on parami, sadhu for your time? Thank you, Arjan. So samadhi uh, is this uh, stability of mind, firmness, of concentrated mind. Uh, and so this refers to sama, samadhi, a right concentration, and we just call this samadhi. Uh, so this samadhi is for the purpose to learn 
uh, how to develop wisdom or to have wisdom arise. Um, so this is the wisdom that will lead to uh, insight or knowing into the truth. And this uh, brings us to freedom from suffering. Um, for jhana, this is uh, absorption only, uh, becoming absorbed into the object. And so it is peacefulness as well, um, but it's going towards uh, peace by absorbing into the object, um, by going more refined and more deeper into absorption. And so when the Buddha as a Bodhisattva learned from the two teachers, Udaka and Udaka Ramaputta and Alara Kalama, uh, he learned about uh, absorbing or absorption, like the jhanas. Uh, but Sama Samadhi is about uh, Samadhi and it's having Samadhi and then contemplating in order for wisdom to arise. And so this is the difference between the two. Uh, that the jhanas are absorbing into peace only and doesn't contemplate into uh, anicca, dukkha, and anatta. So parami uh, is the building these supreme qualities or inner virtues. Um, and this can be of different levels, it can be the level of parami that one has the virtues of a sawaka disciple, enlightened disciple of the Buddha, uh, or to the level of a, a siti sawaka, like a, one of the 80 great disciples of the Buddha, or even the right hand, uh, left hand chief disciples, a pacheka Buddha, or if uh, there's the fulfillment of the, you say, the 30 parameters, uh, then that's uh, the attainment of. Uh, the Bharamis required to become enlightened as a Sama Sambuddha, perfectly awakened Buddha. Um, but to keep precepts, uh, that is Bharami as well. Um, so these Bharamis are things that bring our mind uh, to have higher virtues. Um, and so practice of dana of sila, of bhavana, is building of bharami. So walking meditation, we can say, is building bharami, uh, or chanting itipiso um, 108 times, or doing a uh, walking meditation, uh, say, around the uposada, or walking around 108 times. Uh, this requires the uh, putting forth of effort. And uh, this may take one hour, two hours, three hours, or even five hours. And so this is one setting, one such a making a vow uh, of truth in order to fulfill and to accomplish this. And this is what we call building Bharami. And by doing this, uh, if the body is able to, uh, to do it, uh, the mind gains more Bharami. Uh, and so walking meditation, sitting meditation uh, is considered building Bharami or one practices on the observance days, maybe uh, staying up all night without sleep. Uh, so that is also Bharami, um, even though the mind may not be peaceful, but uh, the Bharami is gained from it, uh, the Bharami of Kanti, of patient endurance. <laughs>